Hi, this is Chris Nicastro, Commissioner of Education, bringing you an update about our 10 by 20 efforts. First, I want to talk a little bit about the waiver from the ESEA, or No Child Left Behind, that the department submitted last month. Uh, the waiver, of course, is uh, our way of asserting Missouri's accountability system in place of the federal accountability system. Uh, we're hoping that uh, we will be able to uh, get permission from the federal government to use our own system for measuring school accountability both at the school and the district level. Uh, we have a long experience of dealing with MSIP, uh, Missouri School Improvement Program. Uh, we know how to handle accountability in a way that is fair and also responsible to, to those measures that we know we need to achieve. And we're confident that uh, our system is going to serve us much better uh, in the long run than certainly the provisions of No Child Left Behind. We don't anticipate getting any response from uh, the federal government or any uh, final approval probably till early May, so we'll keep you informed as we get additional information. In the meantime, thanks so much to all of you for all of your help in crafting that waiver. We had lots of feedback from the field, and since we've submitted the application, we've had very good response uh, from many of you about um, your uh, appreciation for us doing that. I think that all of us agree that uh, Missouri can do a better job if we're left to, to uh, designing our own system. Second, today I'd like to talk a little bit about our budget and about what's happening in the legislature regarding budget, both uh, for the department as well as uh, for public schools in our state. I think all of you know that uh, the governor's recommendation for elementary and secondary education was in some ways better than we expected. We of course are working through the process and working uh, right now at the House level to get that budget uh, finalized. Uh, we don't anticipate significant changes in that budget uh, in the House. It appears uh, from what we've seen and from the appropriations work we've done and from the indications from the budget committee so far that we should come through that process uh, much uh, the same as we've been discussing over the last month or so. In the meantime, uh, I know you got information last month that the governor did release some additional monies for transportation. Certainly we're grateful to the governor for that continued support. I know as you continue to face higher fuel prices that transportation costs are an increasing burden on local school districts. So uh, it was nice to get a bit of relief in that area. We will uh, be working with the governor's office and with others as time goes by to see if there are additional funds that can be released to, to try to provide more assistance at the local level. I'd also like to talk a little bit about legislation that's been moving. Um, all of you have been very involved in uh, talking about and working uh, with your legislators regarding the, the big omnibus bill that's been making its way through the legislature. Certainly um, that bill has uh, generated a great deal of interest. Uh, there are parts of it that almost everyone loves. There are parts of it that uh, some people uh, don't love. But we uh, continue to provide, a, uh, provide support for both legislators and school officials as uh, we work through um, those bills. One highlight from uh, late last month was the passage of House Bill 1174. It was passed unanimously by the House. Uh, this is the bill that the department has been working on for some time that gives us flexibility in how we provide assistance and support and intervention uh, to districts that have been classified as unaccredited. Uh, as you know, the current law uh, provides that we must wait for uh, two full years after a district is unaccredited before the State Board of Education is authorized to take direct intervention. We believe that, that our um, timeline is, is not necessarily something that serves us well, certainly doesn't serve districts well. There are times when uh, the department and the State Board of Education might want to act more quickly. If there's an urgent situation or something where we believe immediate intervention is warranted, we, we would like to have the, the ability to intervene uh, more quickly. In some cases where districts are making progress, where there's been a change in leadership or a change in direction that is showing results, it doesn't make sense for the district to lapse automatically at the end of two years. And in 
any rate, we're happy to see that bill pass the House. We're hoping that it will be taken up in the Senate very soon and uh, that it will also uh, get passed sometime, hopefully, uh, while you're watching this message uh, during the month of March. I hope that you're aware right now that we do have a statewide contract for a student information system. Uh, through a fairly lengthy process and with the assistance of many of you, we were able to go out for bid and secure a contract with an external vendor to provide a statewide contract for uh, all districts in the state for student information services. Tyler Technology is the vendor that won that award. It is the vendor that uh, close to 300 of you are using right now. Uh, we believe that uh, by having this statewide contract, uh, we will be able to increase services, we'll be able to increase the focus of this department in providing support for your work, and we'll also ultimately be able to drive the price down for everyone. Finally, I uh, would like to just mention that uh, Missouri School Read Day is Friday, uh, March the 9th. Uh, it is, uh, by statute, the second Friday in March each year. And we would encourage you to have all kinds of reading activities going on in your, in your district. Uh, we'll be mentioning that frequently in all of our communications in, in the coming weeks. I would just like to make a footnote that I would hope in our public schools in the state of Missouri that every day is reading day. Uh, we have an obligation to ensure above all that our children are literate and even that um, uh, reading becomes a part of how families uh, interact with one another on a regular basis. Uh, reading is really the foundation of education and I would hope that uh, those celebrations will happen not only on March 9th but on each and every day. Have a wonderful spring. Uh, we'll hope that uh, the bad weather goes away and, and that we don't continue to be uh, plagued with these tornadoes. Um, in the meantime, uh, please have a wonderful spring and enjoy uh, uh, the culmination of another school year. Thanks.